This time, we're in Prague. Coming up, 20 things to do in Prague, but first, let's show you a cheap way to get into the city. There's different ways you can get into town. There's the usual taxis. Um, there's loads of different bus routes. Bus number 119 takes you to um, a metro stop. From there, you can connect onto the trains and go anywhere in the city. We got a ticket from the public transport machines, which are just inside the terminal building. You validate it, put a time on it, it's 90 minutes. Um, and that should be enough time, more than enough time to get into the city. The Old Town Square is as good a place as any to start your tour around Prague. It's always bustling with people and is home to many restaurants, bars, statues, memorials, a gothic church and a town hall. So there's lots to see and more than we can show you in this video. Located just off the square is the famous astronomical clock, installed in 1410 and the third oldest in the world. Huge crowds are drawn on the hour to witness the distinctly underwhelming display. On the hour, the doors open and the 12 apostles rotate. The four figures flanking the clock depict things that were despised at the time of the clock making. A man with a mirror depicts vanity, a miser with a bag of gold greed, a skeleton ringing the bell for death, and a man shaking his head signifying their unwillingness to go. One worth ticking off your to-do list if you're in the area on the hour. Lunch or a snack at Nasi Maso is a great choice. Whilst listed as a butcher's, which it clearly is, it's also a great place for sandwiches, sausages and other tasty foods. Pick your meat and how you want it cooked and then try and find a space to eat it in this popular shop. A little pricey for Prague but delicious all the same. Kind of like solid meat, not like like a proper meat. Yeah. Gherkiny. Mm. Mm. This is the ham. Frog ham. Very good. No, the pickles. It's been like, it's been like bacon, really. There's some pickles in there. Quite messy. Mm. It's like a sourdough bread, which is pretty good. Uh, very nice. In between the town square and the river is the Jewish Quarter, which was formerly the ghetto. The area is full of synagogues, the old Jewish cemetery and museum, and a bronze statue memorial to the famous novelist Franz Kafka, who was born in Prague. Prague is famous for numerous pieces of art, including a variety of unusual sculptures and statues, ranging from the funny to weird and completely creepy. King Kong's Balls, located next to the Intercontinental Hotel, is by a French artist and was installed as part of the 2019 International Sculpture Festival. It gets a lot of attention for some reason. 
just like other European cities, there are plenty of outdoor stalls tempting you with quick, tasty snacks like this old Prague ham. The chimney cake is another famous treat, thin strips of dough wrapped around a wooden stick and then glazed with sugar and grilled on an open coal fire until caramelized. Mm. We're here in Locale, which is a chain restaurant here in Prague. They serve up some traditional food on the menu for some really good prices. We've just gone for a couple of local brew Pilsner Aquel. Quell. Um, they're 52 Czech crowns per half litre. And you get a little piece of paper here to mark off how many beers you've had. We've only had two so far. You may wonder why the library is number eight on our list. Well, inside the entrance is the amazing book tower. Stick your head through the hole and you're in the middle of an infinite book tunnel. This clever optical illusion is free and without too many tourists. Prague is full of bars, mostly pretty touristy. This Cuban themed bar was no different but the cocktails were strong and it had a great vibe with some live Cuban music. A must do is a boat trip on the river Valtava. Buy tickets next to Charles Bridge. We've just bought our boat tickets for the Prague Venice boat tour. It costs 340 Czech crown, which is about 11 pounds something. Pretty cheap. It lasts for 45 minutes and it goes along the, the main Danube River as well as some little smaller canal. <laughs> Get a free drink as well. There are loads of other options from pedal boats in the summer season to nighttime dinner cruises. This 45 minute quick trip is the most popular at any time of year. You get a very different perspective of the city from the river as you glide along in the wooden boat and even on a grey overcast day like ours. The castle on one side and the famous Charles Bridge in front or at times above you. We'll walk across that later. The tour guide provides some commentary and you can also use the audio guide for the language that you need. The cruise steers you down the narrow canals of Prague's Little Venice. The narrow channels are lined with pretty houses, churches and a medieval mill. Before you know, the 45 minutes is up, but it's a great way to take a break from walking for an hour. Just as famous as the old town square is Charles Bridge. The 515 metre long pedestrian crossing is decorated by 30 Baroque style statues. There are three bridge towers, two at the lesser quarter end and one on the old town side. A bridge has stood in this location since 1357, so a huge amount of rebuilding, sympathetic additions and conservation has taken place over the years. Very popular, it's always full of visitors jostling for a view and to take a look at some of the pop-up art sellers or music buskers. Once you've crossed over Charles Bridge, you'll probably be heading towards the Prague Castle area. Don't miss out on a short detour to two sites worth seeing. The Piss sculpture is right next to the Franz Kafka Museum 
and is an interesting installation by the provocative artist David Cerny. The two male figures of bronze peeing into the pond, shaped like the Czech Republic, turn their hips and lift their penises in such a way that the stream of water writes letters on the surface. You can SMS a number to have them write your message in the water, although I found it hard to read anything they wrote. Just around the corner from the sculpture is the narrowest street in Prague. Unfortunately, it was closed during our visit, so we weren't able to experience how claustrophobic it was. Around the city, there's loads of different towers you can pay to go up. Some of them are pretty expensive. One near the astronomical clock in the centre of town, something like £10 to go up. We were recommended this place, it's St Nicholas's Church, just after you cross uh, Charles Bridge from the old town. Really nice, it's quite close to the castle and you still have an amazing view and it only costs uh, 100 krona, which is like £3. 215 steps and 65 metres high, the climb up the tower will take you 10 to 15 minutes. You can stop off at different sections, checking out a small number of rooms. The tower was previously a watchtower due to its great views over the city. And in the 60s and late 80s, a state security observation post monitoring Western embassies. So there's lots of history to this place. Up top, you have panoramic views all across Prague, including Charles Bridge and the castle. Shopping should always be on your list of things to do. Whether sweet treats or trinkets and fridge magnets, they're all here. There's plenty of places to stop and shop as you take the slow climb up the hill towards the castle. The architecture around this area is particularly beautiful, so make sure you spare some time to take it all in. Prague Castle is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the world's largest castle complex, 70,000 square meters. The complex consists of palaces and churches dating back to the 10th century. So you can come into the grounds of Prague Castle for free. There's a little security check. The grounds themselves are really beautiful. There's a massive cathedral and various museums around. You have to buy tickets if you want to go in anywhere. And it's kind of busy today, so we haven't bothered. The areas are so big that they have four different ticket types on offer, ranging from 250 to 350 Czech crowns. Whether you decide to get a ticket or not, there's lots to do and there's some lovely walks.
So the thing with Prague is, because it's so popular, it's kind of become its own worst enemy in the sense that everything is chargeable. Um, if you want to go into the Prague Castle attractions, it's like 11 euros. If you want to go to the toilet, you have to pay. Um, kind of annoying. As you exit the castle, there's some great views of the city. If you want to use the metro buses or trams in Prague, it's just one ticket for all and it's a time ticket. So you can choose either 30 minutes, 90 minutes or 24 hours. Um, when you come to buy the tickets, you can choose uh, Czech, English, German or Russian. Uh, you just select your language buy tickets, there are your time options and prices, select which one you want um, and then how many of the tickets you need and pay in check krona or with a credit card. When you get on any public transport, always remember to validate your time ticket. Another insane building is the Dancing House, completed in 1996. It's a hotel inside and a rooftop bar that anyone can visit called the Glass House. The head of Kafka is located outside the Quadrio shopping centre. This autonomous sculpture is made up of 42 rotating panels and was created by David Cerny. It's quite mesmerising to watch the 11 metre shiny head twisting and reflecting. Hanging from the ceiling of the Art Nouveau Lucerna Palace is the mocking tribute to the past and modern leadership of Prague. The statue of King Wenceslas riding an upside down horse is definitely on the list of weird things to do in Prague. We hope you've enjoyed our 20 things to do in Prague. Of course, this is just a small selection. We hope you find it useful. And if you do, give us a like and consider subscribing for lots more travel guides, hotel and airline reviews. Until the next time, happy travels from the Memory Seekers.